Scripture engagement, building community, building community with media. When I was a little boy, I read the story of the little engine that... That's right. And what did the little engine that could say? I think I can. I think I can. The little engine that could is a train. And it was chugging up the mountain with all kinds of good things for the good little boys and girls down in the valley, down in the community. You all have my great admiration as developers and as advisors, putting up ministries that are helping to get the word of God out in mobile media. You're my heroes. Today, I want to give a little presentation of what I believe that the Lord has put on my heart about, for myself and for, and for others, a, a plea, actually, a, 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 to ask you for your help in doing something. I want you to say two words with me, train and drain. Train or drain. Now, this is the train, but what I'm not talking about is the little engine that could train, but to train. My appeal to you is to train workers on the field so that your work will not go down the drain. I've seen too many times in our 30 years in Morocco where good intention translators and people who have put together language lessons and all manner of helps get stuck. They're intelligent, dedicated people who develop materials, language materials, and then they're on audio cassette and they don't know what else to do with them. They're in print and they don't know what else to do with them. So that my career has started out in uh, making tools very early on, transforming print and, and uh, low-tech media into more approachable media for workers. Because if you don't train workers on the field to use your things, then your best efforts can go down the drain. Or even worse, in a contextualized situation, <laughs> They go down here. But all of you are wonderful developers, and you have a can-do, I think I can, I think I can bring my materials, my expertise, my calling to workers on the field to train them so that your, your efforts will not be lost, but instead be really fully utilized. And that's what I'm talking about in building community, because I'm talking about a community of workers, a community of workers who are on the field. Now, workers on the field, when they first get there, and we're mentoring couples, and we're coaching teams now in Morocco as we uh, outfit them, equip them with media materials, that we... Uh, oh, I wanted to get to this, is the first off that there's good biblical precedent. There's good biblical precedent for making, making, your, uh, of your, making your work available to workers on the field. The first, uh, the, when God downloaded the law onto the first tablets, he gave them to Moses. And Moses did not say, come up here and get them. He went down instead to the people. And he presented them so that they could be read, so that they could walk along the way and read the law with their children as you rise up, as you go to sleep. And so Moses is our good example right away for bringing media down to the people. Uh, the reason why I say down to the people, you might be thinking to say, well, gee, I'm not Moses, but when workers on the field 
find out about your ministries, when they find out about all the resources that myself and my wife have developed over time, they see a whole Bible, a whole Jesus film. They see the whole tuna. They say, ah, and they're intimidated. They consider you to be like Moses or, or Zeus coming from Olympus. And what they are often intimidated and don't know even how to ask, how am I supposed to eat this big tuna? Now, I love tuna. And I especially like it served as sushi and sashimi. So the, I'm, my appeal is for you uh, is that we need to have bite-sized bits for people. Bite-sized bits for people. And so my appeal to you is to build community with workers, to have, make sure that all the work that you have done doesn't go down the drain. Instead, to then to train workers on the field first by removing the barrier of the big fish and cut it into little fish for consumable quantities. Increasingly, with young the younger generation too, is that they expect things to be made simpler. Uh, and if you want to have your uh, materials, your content, your apps, your expertise to be used, you have to make it simple. So what the Lord has shown me to be is I have become a sushi chef. I would like to appeal to all of you to also to think of yourselves as digital sushi chefs. What can I do to cut things into pieces expertly? Now, I would really like to make exotic sushi and sashimi here as a great art form, but as a sushi chef in Morocco, outfitting the workers that we work with, is that what the best that I can come up with is a simple sushi here. It's got basic ingredients. It's got fish. It's got rice. It's got avocado. It's wrapped up, cut up, lined up. The sushi chef then that I've become then, I want to make this. I take this template and I look at that and I think of making apps that are going to be easy to click on so that each of these pieces representing uh, down there is a tuna. Well, that, I click on that and I get the parable of the Good Samaritan. I don't get the whole fish. I don't get the whole chapter. I only get a piece of sushi that my workers can listen to, memorize, learn, and share with people. My appeal to you is, as app developers, as technology developers, that you consider yourselves to be sushi chefs, to be able to cut things into small, understandable, digestible pieces. And that your work is not done until that happens on people's phones on the field. That's where we're going. So this is the uh, sushi chef. The, I want to, uh, in the next uh, just a few minutes, I want to give you a little bit of an example of what I mean by making sushi-sized, bit-sized bits for workers and training them. Maybe give you a bit of inspiration that in a low-tech way of things that I do, that perhaps in a high-tech way that you're capable of, you can do even a better job than I have. I'm going to take the, go to the next slide. And I uh, want to, uh, before you run that, uh, Ben, that I want to ask, I want to just give a little quick background. There is a new worker on our team. I'll call her Mel. 
Mel uh, called my wife Joan up, and she was excited because Mel had been on the field for a couple of months. She was starting to learn the Berber language. She was down with her landlady and her grandmother, and the Berber grandmother had just found a gold earring that she had lost. She lost a gold earring. She had been searching all over the place for it. She was all excited. And when Mel came into the house, there was rejoicing. And Mel was bursting at the seams because she said, if I could only tell her the parable of the lost coin. Now, we knew from the parable of the lost coin was very effective for us in the Jesus film. When we dubbed it into the Tashelhate Berber language, many years ago. In your language group, perhaps you don't have the parable of the lost coin in your Jesus film, but we got permission to replace a section of the Jesus film that didn't have any meaning to the people in Morocco that we, could, that we, we t field tested it with. When Jesus is speaking in the temple and the women are running up to the great to hear the great words of the prophet Jesus who is uh, teaching in the synagogue, that. Uh, that the original Jesus film had wonderful scriptures of Old Testament prophecies. The Old Testament prophecies that, that we as Westerners or people who are familiar with the Bible would say, that's the Messiah coming up. Everybody should know this. But it was a blank to Moroccans, even Moroccan believers. So we asked for permission and got it. And so we did instead the parable of the lost coin. The parable of the lost coin then was a huge hit because then suddenly all the women were engaged in the Jesus film then at that point when we did the field testing then for the Berber film when, we, it, was first, when it came out in post-production. It was terrific. And so when Mel gave this excited call, I sprung into action. And within a few hours, I produced this little clip for her phone, which Ben will play. No? That one? Okay, good. So if I could... Let's see, we're going to need to have the audio on that as well, if it's at all possible. You can bring up the audio on that particular clip. It's very, very short, so we, we have the time to do it. يغلانت مراو تريالي النقرد دار كرانت مغارد تجلو ياسيات ما خورا السرغاتي فاوت هار الترسي قمي تقن كرا دارس هار تسي قيل هار تستاف يغد توفا غردي تمدو كالنس تتجاري النس تيني ياسنت فرحام ديدي اشكو فيغ تريال النقرد اللي يجلان اراون تينيغ غمكان نسا تفراحنت الملايكان ربي سيو معصي يغيتو and so that was the short clip that I produced within a few hours that said that you know, the woman found the coin, called her neighbors, everyone rejoiced, and this is how the angels of God rejoice in the heavens when a sinner, when a rebellious person turns to the Lord in repentance. So I e emailed that to Mel. She put it on her mobile phone. She took it down the next day to the Berber grandmother and played it for her. They watched it over and over again in rapt attention saying, that's what just happened with us. And Mel had enough Berber language to say, yes, because this is what Jesus said. Jesus knows, and you are lost coin. God, look for you. That's what she could get out. And it was very effective right there on the spot. Since then, I produced many other uh, clips for discipleship. Maybe run the next clip very quickly. Uh, this is the, the bread of life. It's just a simple Bible verse from John. I am the bread of life. Put it together. Yes, yes sir. In a few hours, I got Roman to dirt. When a Darius can, who serves your laws? When a serious man, who serves your fat? 
whoever believes in me will never thirst. Whoever will, the, will never go hungry. And so I've been producing these short video clips, these sushi-sized pieces, and then training workers on the field because it's no longer a big tuna to them anymore that's intimidating, but instead it's a bite-sized piece that say, I can do that, I can say that, I'm going to listen to that, I'm going to have that on my phone, and I'm excited about it, and I'm going to share it with other people. It's fresh bread for them. In this particular case, maybe fresh fish. Uh, so they are, in, they are very excited to be able to, to, to use this. Workers are motivated. And this is what we want to do more and more all the time, is to motivate workers and, so that they're not intimidated, but instead we come down out of Olympus with our high tech and train one piece at a time. One of the things that you might want to consider, too, in eliminating barriers is that what I've learned in, as my wife and I have been um, invited by, and now by many teams within Morocco, and we travel quite a bit now uh, throughout Morocco equipping different teams with the uh, compilation of the media and the scripture that we've put together to, for, for teams, that I've found it's really important for me to go together with my wife. My wife is terrific for lots of different reasons. One of, the, one of the reasons, too, is that because she is not perceived as being a techie. My wife, Joan, will tell you uh, that she feels intimidated. She doesn't feel like she's got very good language. She doesn't have very good technical skills. But she has learned to use a smartphone. And she is the driving force now behind producing a lot of video clips that are really great for women, especially so that I take my wife with me wherever I can to, to, and have her to be the presenter of the sushi pieces. Because I'm considered very often to be the egghead. Oh, Ed is the language genius or guru or something like this. And so that the messenger is very important. So that if you find that you are perceived as being a very um, egg-headed, wizard, guru type of thing. Uh, train someone who has much more appeal. Uh, maybe you'll even be able to train someone who is as beautiful as my wife to, to help to be the one who actually presents the clips because people can say, I can do it. That's what you want. You want that to be the case for people to say, I can do it. I'm um, going to take the next slide. Uh, very, to wrap up a little bit, that we not only produce materials for ourselves, but we, uh, we're also training other people on the field. This particular, uh, this particular uh, scripture picture was produced by a coworker of mine uh, who is now back in his home country. He, has been, he has, maintains a YouTube channel for Berbers. He has a Facebook page for Berbers, and he's been very effective. Even though he's not on the field anymore, he is one of the people who is helping to develop wonderful content. He develops clips, and he developed this very poignant picture, scripture picture, because we, for the first time we ha in, this, in the past couple of months, the first time we have the Berber Bible in the Old Testament, the Old Testament in the Berber translation. And he has then taken to putting a small scripture from Psalm 34, 18. Psalm 34, 18, which is very poignant for him and for me because my brother just lost his wife to suicide. And he sent, I was Skyping with him yesterday, the day before yesterday. And he said, Ed, I want to send you something that's very meaningful to me and that I'm memorizing in Berber. And I would like you to share this as well with everyone that you train who is learning Berber, is that the Lord is close to those who are the brokenhearted. He saves those who are weak. He rescues those who are weak. And so it's not just a matter of 
doing things on the mobile phone, but then even pictures like this then, we're provoking nationals that we work together with and others. I've worked a lot in ethnomusicology. And so when I see psalms like this, I automatically think, Sidirupi, Yakmor Suwili Ripirsha, Arjinjamen Wili Kanin Nirmei. The way that the Berber would chant in the mountains, a shepherd would chant to himself for a longing for a lost lover. The chanting these so that these are the small pieces, these are the high emotional impact pieces that can motivate workers and to share with nationals so that they can also receive the word of God. And as we do this, we're building a community of workers. We're training workers. Because I want to see you train so that your work doesn't go down the 